the author of Zookeeper's War, which in 2008 won the inaugural Prime Minister's Award for Fiction. The Zookeeper's War has been published in Britain and translated into Spanish and Portuguese. To support his writing, he had worked various jobs as barman, taxi driver, public servant, book reviewer, university tutor, and life model. He holds a PhD in creative writing from the University of Melbourne, and Stephen Conti's participation is sponsored by Asia Link. Now Stephen will read an excerpt from the Zookeeper's War. Please, Stephen. Thank you so much, Harry. Um, a brief description of the Zookeeper's War. It is a novel about an Australian woman, Vera, who in the 1930s marries the director of the Berlin Zoo and spends the war, the Second World War, looking after the animals in the zoo through the bombing. Um, in the following scene, uh, Vera is in uh, the damaged snake enclosure and uh, she discovers uh, that one snake has actually started to eat its mate, which is a, a common problem uh, in, uh, in snake husbandry. Hmm. Uh, they tend to eat each other by mistake. Um, she then uh, rushes off, or to sends, uh, rushes off to find her husband, who's the the uh, director of the zoo, and he comes and deals with the problem. Um, throughout this scene, there is also a tension between Vera and one of the uh, Czechoslovakian slave workers at the, who, is, uh, who is there as labour in the zoo. There's a certain sexual tension has been building up with Vera and this young man. So it's just a short scene. She climbed through a hatch into the corn snake display. Rocks and sand and tufts of grass, three walls, a ceiling and a viewing window. The air was warm. Of the two snakes, only the female was alive, her neck swollen by a rat and half of her own mate, the male having seized the opposite end of their prey, then inched with it into the female's mouth. Now the female was exhausted, at risk of dying. Her agate eyes were pressed backwards by the body of the male, which trailed from her unhinged jaws. Her neck convulsed, and her tail swept the sand. Vera clambered into the service corridor and returned to the gallery where she sent one of the poles in search of Axel. The remaining poles lit up cigarettes while Kribich leaned against a wall, his eyes meeting hers, then shying away. They had lost the gift of small talk, of any talk. To cover her embarrassment, she withdrew to gaze like a visitor at the iguanas and monitors. The terrarium had so far escaped real damage, but even so, the viewing windows would have long since shattered if Axel's father hadn't used reinforced glass. Cracks flowered at random through the wire mesh. Ten minutes later, Axel arrived and entered the enclosure, and shortly afterwards he came out looking grim. He ran his eyes over the work team and asked Kribich to fetch a saw and Vera tense despite herself, knowing that Axel's choice meant nothing but worrying that it might. Kribich caught her eye for what seemed like an instant too long and then left by the stairs. Ten minutes later, he returned and handed over the saw and Vera went back into the enclosure with Axel. He crouched beside the snakes and asked her to hold the female's neck. She had handled snakes before, but again registered the strangeness. The scales were dry, like overlapping fingernails, a shared inheritance of keratin. Axel positioned the hacksaw and cut into the female's back, into the victim's back, a centimetre away from the female's mouth. She tried to struggle. Her gums were pink and her fangs massaged the other's spine. Axel was through in seconds and set aside the dead snake's tail. What blood there was oozed, the victim having suffocated hours before. The flesh was ridged like a salmon's. Vera let go and backed away. The surviving snake thrashed and slid into a torpor of digestion. Blood reddened the teeth of the saw. She left with Axel by the hatch and returned to the gallery where they parted, 
he to his rounds and she to her work team. Yeah. Portents could mean anything. That was the trouble. Or nothing at all. She tried pushing aside the images that couldn't. The picture that came to her that wouldn't go away was of what the dead snake might have seen at the end. The other's jaws on his snout in a firm caress. The rising rim of the mouth and then darkness. Thank you.